first our group panel right here in the space today, using technology to grow and sustain your career. Can we please welcome up our panelists, starting with Shanika Aguilar from Storylight Studios. And Catherine Toth Fox from Hawaii Magazine. And Nolan Hong, uh, co-owner of Pop Creative Media. And Micah Motas from Colea Gold. Colea Gold, thank you. Come on up, guys. Just, uh, I'll, I'll get things rolling with a couple of questions, if you don't mind, and then we'll see if uh, anyone in the audience has more specific queries about the work you do. Uh, if you want to know more about the guests while they're answering some of the questions, have a look through your conference book. You can take a look at what specifically they do and think of some interesting questions you may want to ask them. So that'll be great. Uh, so what technology do you regularly use? Like what specific apps and platforms uh, are, are useful to you? Not, not necessarily in daily life, but in pre-production for, for the work that you do. Or if there's any crossover between things you use in daily life that actually you use in pre-production. Okay. Um, well, first of all, thank you guys for having me. Thanks, Kim, for inviting and for you emceeing, Nick. Um, I, I have community colleges in my heart. I was faculty at commun uh, Kapiolani Community College. So um, I, I love community college just in general. I love what, what happens here. It's amazing. So uh, let me explain what I do first, and then I'll answer your question. I think I have to sort of That's put great. this into context. Thank you. So I'm the editor at Hawaii Magazine. We're a Honolulu-based travel publication. Our main audience is um, North American readership, so Canada and, and the US. We don't have a big base here, so we rely heavily on social media to get our branding across. So what I do is produce uh, a magazine, a consumer magazine that publishes six times a year, so every other month. And I did work at Honolulu Magazine, which is a, a monthly magazine readership based here and prior to that I've worked at it at the local newspaper so what I do in media uh, in terms of using um, social media or any kind of technology it's really changed uh, when I st so I'm a lot older than I look I think or act or dress or whatever when I started um, back at the newspaper before like this side of the room was born um, we didn't have any kind of social media we didn't have the internet actually um, the internet started later in my career, so we weren't doing web work or blogs or anything like that. And so it was a different world. Now, um, if you don't have experience in any kind of CMS, um, social media use, it's difficult to get a job in any kind of media. It really is. When I graduated from Northwestern, and this was like 20, almost 20 years ago, I remember that when job postings came out, so this is good for the young people to know this, when job postings came out to be a reporter or to be a writer for a magazine, it came with requirements like so many followers on Twitter, so many friends on Facebook, it did. Um, because they, there, there's a lot of reliance now on you um, promoting your own content, promoting your company, um, much more because newsrooms are, are shrinking. So as Christy said that there's a lot of you know, jobs for content creators, social media, YouTube, that's very much true. But that also means if you're doing anything in media, and actually any kind of job, public relations is another example, marketing, you still have to know these platforms in order to work currently. Um, this is just the way of, this is just the future of media in general. So I use, of course, Instagram, uh, Pinterest, Twitter, Facebook. Um, we don't actively use Yelp. When I worked for a restaurant, we did. I don't think there's a platform we don't use anymore. Right. Yeah. There's more that we focus on. So as a print publication, we definitely focus on Facebook and Instagram. But something to know, they own your audience and we don't. And so that's something we're really trying to work towards is how do we as a media brand own our own audience as opposed to letting a company like Facebook or Instagram sort of control that and control the data. So it's just weird things that we're intersecting now. That's fascinating. Yeah. Catherine, can I ask a follow-up question? I'll sure. let you think about it and I'll come back to you. Okay. Is there a platform that you see, um, you know, a new one that's emerging that maybe isn't super huge yet, but might be huge by the time these young people have to sort of enter the workforce? I'll think about it. Yeah. Think about it. And you, if, the, if the answer is no, that's okay too. Yeah. It's, okay. it's like, the, well, the answer is I don't know. Yeah, right. Because the, they're going to invent it. I don't know. Yeah, you know? You guys are going to yeah. invent a new platform, right? Let's see that. Let's see that. That would be amazing. That's a yeah. great answer. Fantastic. Um, Nolan, let's move on down to you. Um, and if you want, why don't you, uh, thank you, uh, Catherine. Why don't you give us a quick introduction of what you do, and then I'll, I'll throw a question at you. How's that sound? All right, sounds good. Uh, thanks, Kat, for, for setting the, the bar so high, because yeah. I feel like I don't have as much uh, interesting and useful 
things to say to you all, but uh, I'll try my best to introduce myself and, and what I've done that maybe will help you get a better sense of maybe some questions that you could ask me through uh, my experiences. So um, I kind of have, I, I always joke that I, I, I had this fantasy for the longest time that I would love to be on the cover of Midweek Magazine. I don't know why, <laughs> but, um, and I also imagine what the cover photo would be, which is me with all these different hats floating around. And the title would be like, a man of many, who wears many hats. <laughs> um, and that's kind of uh, the way I guess I could describe uh, my experiences. I've done so many different things and it all kind of relates back to media. And they say like, uh, good at many, but not a master at none or something. Jack of all trades. Uh, Jack of all trades like kind it, of thing. Like so uh, by all means, don't, uh, I'm not trying to say, I know everything. I just know a little bit about ev everything. So um, I started out in performance and acting. So I've been doing uh, television, theater, and, and film acting for over 15 years now. And then also, also voice acting as well. Uh, and then I've also been, uh, up until recently, I was on uh, radio doing a morning show for 102.7 The Bomb as uh, one of the um, performers on there. Um, but I've also done uh, work on the other side of the camera as well. So uh, my wife and I, we own our own media creation company called Pop Creative Media. So we help a lot of uh, nonprofits and small businesses and oddly enough, um, engage couples with creating <laughs> video content and, and also uh, uh, creative content for their uh, websites and their social media. And I bring up uh, engaged couples because we also help them create uh, what we call pop love stories, which is having them and their family and friends help share their, their story of how they met and what has uh, led them to the point of which where they will show the video which is at their wedding. Um, and so the thing that kind of ties it all in is that the thing that I like to imagine myself as is an interpreter where our, our um, clients or the people that we help, they want to communicate to their audience something about them or how they want to link up and, and create a relationship. And sometimes they have difficulty doing that because whether um, they don't have the ability to reach the masses or um, they might not necessarily speak the same language. A lot of times we work with nonprofits that are like, we have so much that we do, but it's so hard to explain that to people. And if they only knew the depth of what we do or, or what our heart is and, and what the purpose is that we're trying to do things, then maybe they could have a better uh, feeling of wanting to work with us or support us and whatnot. And that's where my wife and I come in, where we say, hey, let's learn about you, understand who you are and what you, who your authentic real selves are, and how do we use our tools and our skills to communicate that, and also understanding who your audience is and how they want to receive that information and how they ingest things and how they connect to it on an emotional level. And so that uh, when we use our video content and such, it's that we're using it in a way that helps interpret that message to that audience. And so uh, as I continue with what I do now, um, not only doing that kind of creative content for our clients and, and the people we serve, I'm also doing that for myself as well. So that's why um, I've been doing a podcast for the past two years now called Hanging Out with Nolan Hong. And it's pretty much exactly what it sounds like. It's just having a guest on there and we're hanging out. We've had guests like Kat on there, and, and the idea uh, is that uh, I just want to help people share their stories. I feel like I know so many interesting people in the community, and even people I don't know, and I want to bring them on and help connect them to an audience where not only are we sharing what they do, but who they are as people. And so when we had people like Kat on, we didn't necessarily talk a whole lot about, like, Kat, explain to us what you but it's like, hey, how did you get here? What, where'd you grow up? What, what bored this idea that you wanted to get into what you do and all these things? And we talk about who knows what. We never really have a set list of questions or anything. We just have them sit down on our couch and we talk. And out of it comes out an hour to two hour uh, conversation, which uh, from the feedback we get has been really entertaining and also inspirational for our listeners. Because I think that everyone, and people always say like, oh, I'm, I'm boring. Kat told me that. She's like, I'm boring. I don't know what you do want to talk to me about. I have nothing to say. I was like, everybody has a story and everybody's interesting. And uh, I think that's why when we look at the, the depth of the list of guests that we've had on our podcast, we have everyone from musicians to actors to dog communicators to uh, 
uh, ghost storytellers, like all kinds of different people, professional wrestlers. And so um, everyone has a unique story, but it's, it's a common theme of we all just have something to share with the world. And, and my, I steal this from Will Smith. My, my hope and my goal is that I want my life to be of value to others. And so my hope is that I can be that catalyst to sharing other people's stories and helping them share their stories so they can be of value to others as well. So uh, we do that with our podcast. And then I just recently, this past um, January, started um, going back into YouTube. We, I originally uh, went into YouTube five or six years ago where my, my idea was to make short sketches and, and entertaining funny shows. <laughs> And that lasted about three episodes. And then I realized I need to go and make money and, and start a career that, that can sustain that. So I kind of put that on ice for a while. But then this uh, past January, I said, no, I want YouTube to be a, another form of communication with me and my audience. And, and so I started uh, doing uh, a vlog series, which morphed into from a, an edited video content to live streaming. So now it's, I stream live on YouTube and on Facebook. And um, so that's kind of the, the different hats that I wear. I, I produce, direct, write, act, perform, vlog, podcast, and uh, entrepreneur, run a business, which I'm constantly learning how to do as well. And as, as unfun as it sounds, it's a lot of uh, very valuable parts of, of this career. So I'll try my best to share with you the mistakes and the things that I've learned so that maybe you can do it better than me and, and get to success a lot faster than I did. But in a nutshell, that's who I am. Thanks, and I uh, look forward to talking to you all. Nice. That's good. Awesome. So let's go with that. Um, you know, the, the, the single smartest man I've ever met in my life has a saying, which is, make mistakes, make mistakes faster. Right? So, <laughs> so let's start uh, with, what, what uh, you can think about it if you want, and we'll come back to you. What's one of the biggest mistakes you made when transitioning from one kind of technology to share stories or be an interpreter of stories to another? That would be a great thing for these young people and other creators to know when they're going to start their career. I can come back if nothing pops to mind immediately. Do you have something right now? Or? I, I, I think for me, um, and, and trust me, I make tons of mistakes because even from when I was in high school, like they always say uh, the worst mistake a teacher ever gave uh, in giving advice was that, I guess it was in math class, they said guess and check. Like don't guess and check, actually like know how to do it and then actually write it out. And I was like, guess and check, that sounds so much easier and faster. I'm just gonna <laughs> guess and check if it looks right and okay, here you go. And uh, your, my grade point average will, will prove that that was not a good thing to do, but that's kind of how I, I have approached uh, the, all the different things that I've done. So even with social media and online uh, technologies, it's kind of been that. I was like, oh, that sounds like fun. Uh, let me just try that. And I think the biggest mistake was that I thought, and this is what a, a mistake that a lot of our clients make too, is like whatever's popular, they go, oh, we got to be on all of these things. I heard that Pinterest is really popular, and I heard that Instagram, everyone's on that, and, and Twitter, we got to do all that. And then not truly understanding that each platform has its purpose and its audience. Mm -hmm. And so once I figured out that you don't have to be great and, and involved in all of them, but know who your audience is and know that these are just avenues of communication. So knowing that this is the type of audience that I want to communicate to, so what's the best avenue of communication? Which technology will get me to them um, the most efficient and, and successful way? And then when I figure that out, then get to you know, become an expert and learn about that, that product and then try to use it. So um, that was the biggest mistake. Was I was just like, oh, everybody's on YouTube. Let's just do it. And then not even knowing who's on YouTube and how it works and all that stuff. And so now I think, and, and, we're, and we're constantly learning because these all change as well, right? As soon as you think you know how it works, then they switch it and change the algorithms and all that stuff. So um, just knowing um, who your audience is first and then figuring out the technology and medium that you want to use to reach them is probably the biggest mistake I made, but that I learned from and the most valuable and that I'm constantly trying to figure out as well. Great advice. Thank you, Nolan. That's oh, awesome. Cool. Right on. Uh, let's move on down the line. Um, Shamit, uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about the work you do and share it with the, uh, the audience here, and then I'll throw some interesting questions at you. How's that sound? Cool. All right. Thank you. Um, hi, everyone. Um, thank you for having me. Um, I kind of started off, well, I started off in middle school when I kind of 
realized that I was really into filmmaking. Mm. Well, making videos. I was vlogging when I was in middle school. Yes. Um, and then uh, by high school, there was a media program at Moana Lua, so I figured I would take the four-year integrated program. Cool. And that was where I kind of solidified my skills as like a filmmaker. Um, right out of high school, I started off as an editor because one of my mentors at the time advised to me that if you were to become a filmmaker or a storyteller, you also have to understand how you want kind of like your deliverables or like how you want the film to be communicated. Absolutely. And so a lot of like post-production involves editing and like understanding the story, but you, you, al you almost have to know what you're shooting um, before you kind of start getting into it. Sure. So um, I started off as an editor and that kind of helped me solidify kind of like my purpose um, as like a filmmaker. And then I started off doing weddings. So that's kind of how I got started. And a lot of the wedding videos that I saw on Island were really cut and dry. And so I wanted to do something different with it. I wanted to include, I wanted to be more like purposeful with the way that I created videos and so I tried to I tried as much as possible to get to know the people that I was working with and collaborating with in order to create films that actually meant something to them and had purpose and had meaning to them um, and then that kind of bled into my college career where I started taking up narrative filmmaking and documentary filmmaking and that's kind of where I am right now um, I just graduated, so I'm still learning things. Awesome. Um, but yeah, so now I'm at Nella Media Group. We just rebranded, so now we're an NMG network. And I'm one of the filmmakers in the video department. And what we're trying to do is we're, our focus is on the travel industry, mm. but we're trying to kind of change the atmosphere and kind of change the whole dynamics of how um, videos and social media and consumable digital like images are being communicated to tourism and um, tourists and like the whole tourism industry and so we're trying to change the dynamic so that it's not so salesy and we're not trying to like force a product on your face but now we're focusing more on like community engagement and trying to find and trying to do create films with more intention is what we're trying to do and so our main platforms is mainly honestly it's Instagram that's where our biggest kind of like our biggest pull is in and um, yeah so that's I also use that as in my own entrepreneurial business um, on the side when I'm not working at NMG Network I'm creating videos for like musicians fashion designers um, and if I have time I do it for weddings and like engaged couples as well um, and I learned that Instagram and social media has played a huge part in me being able to build kind of my community and like the people that I work with. Um, and also being able to just interact and connect more with the people on the island. Um, I can't tell you enough how, like, there's been so many instances where I would post something on Instagram or I'd post something on my Instagram story and someone would message me and say, hey, I know that person, or hey, I worked with that person, or hey, that person's my blah, blah, blah. And so it's just a really great place to bring the community closer and like just get to know people. And just having that sense of community is really refreshing, especially in this generation. And yeah, it's a lot easier to communicate and connect with people through like social media platforms. And That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, do you mind if I ask a question related to that? For sure. I have two, actually, I want to ask you, but the first one, let's, let's tag on right there. Um, so, I mean, you know, uh, have you also communicated with people that you've seen post things, and has that ever resulted in a, in a, in a good working relationship? Oh, yeah. Or yeah. Wonderful, right? So, Instagram, honestly, is where I kind of met most of my current friends right now, and right. kind of how I got my um, position at NMG Network. Awesome. Cool. Um, uh, I got my job because I saw my friend post a story about how NMG was 
transitioning into a video platform cool. instead of strictly a magazine platform. Nice. And so I was like, oh, that's really cool. I just graduated. Like, that's a great place to work at. Like, I'm going to apply and try it out. And so um, sure enough, by this year, they hired me full time. And so, um, yeah, Instagram has actually, it has built my community and my network, my network with people, like with professionals in the industry. And I've met so many great like graphic designers and like filmmakers and editors and so many people just by watching people's stories and just by like looking at what they're posting and reading their captions and and communicating, and with, communicating them. with them, yeah. Which, which might be an important step for you young guys to think about. If there's, if there's people you follow on Instagram that you enjoy and that they do the kind of work that you may find fascinating, reach out to them, yeah? That's Comment cool. on their things or, or, or direct message them or something and let them know you exist and what you're working on in your own career, right? So that's really great that you've been able to do that and that you've, you've built a network and even got a full-time job out of it. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, the other question I had for you actually goes back a bit. So when talking about editing, because I also agree, I think that's super important to understand if you're going to make any kind of digital content. Do you have any recommendations for software that like you, you use now or you think is pretty current and useful for any of these young people who might be you know, creating films or editing um, for anything yeah, where they want to post? What would you say um, I'm extremely biased. So I strictly sure. use Adobe Premiere Pro. Um, but Ever since they updated the program, it's been really buggy. Mm -hmm. And so I was talking to another colleague of mine and he was telling me how DaVinci Resolve is starting to become kind of like a better version of Adobe. DaVinci what, sorry? DaVinci Resolve. DaVinci Resolve, okay, yeah. great, thank you. Because yeah. it's, um, the way that it processes footage and like the clips and the ability to color grade like when you're editing cool. is so much more seamless than when you're working on Adobe Premiere. It's so buggy on that program. Right, right. But it's it's a difficult transition because it's a huge learning curve for me. Sure, new, new um, software, right? Very, very new software. But starting off Adobe Premiere Pro is where it's at for me personally. Awesome. Thank you so much. Wow, that's great. Awesome. Yeah, fantastic. Um, Michael, why don't you tell us a bit about your wonderful company and your colleagues and what you guys do, and then I'll ask you some questions. How's that sound? Sounds good. Let's do yeah. it. All right. Okay. Hello, Michael Cole. Oh, yeah, this mic is loud. Okay. O Michael Kwani Hoku Kakayaka Kou Inoa Piha. No hao ma whatever you kia manava kana e mai wa anai mai ao. Kalamai, olelo Hawaii ao. No leila. Mahalo ya oko e na opio e kipa mai ki ya vai oko na e na kanaka e alaka ia mako. Aloha everyone. Aloha. My name is Michael Koni Hoku Kakahiaka Motas, uh, born and raised in Waianae, and uh, I currently live in Eva. Um, growing up, I went to a Hawaiian Immersion School. I went to Kikulakai Punio Anunue, Kikulakai Punio Waiao. Kikulakai Punio Nanakuli, Halau Kumana, and believe it or not, I graduated from Marino High School. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't explain that, um, especially because the students never laugh. They're like, oh, okay. <laughs> um, growing up, I, I grew up in a different environment. I, I grew up in tune with nature, and I grew up my classrooms was the fish pond. My classrooms was the lo'i or the taro farm, and and on a va'a, on a sailing canoe. And with all of this experience, I was on uh, unfortunate. I was fortunate to be with Olelo Community TV <laughs> back in 2000. <laughs> oh, awesome. oh, back in the day, to to you students. Um, notice I call in you students, not young young people. <laughs> students is more honorable. Um, and there I, I learned the fundamentals of media. Um, it's important as simple as how to set up on tripod to roll in your cords for your camera. And the reason why I'm sharing this is because um, I'm a drone pilot. I 
I fly drones, and it's important to know your basics, your fundamentals in everything that you do. And um, to make this more interesting, I'll put things into perspective. So it's early in the morning, and I call my, I'm a little bit younger, so I'll go make you guys do some stuff, students. Um, please stand up if you know what a drone is. Stand up if you know what a drone is, guys. Fantastic. I'm already standing, and luckily I do know what a drone is. So it works. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, everybody know. Nice. Okay, have a seat. Have a seat. Have a seat, relax. Yep. I'm going to get you guys' blood working. Don't worry. <laughs> uh, stand up if you have a drone. You own one. I got to sit down. Interesting, yeah? Okay. <laughs> Nobody shy, yeah? You. <laughs> uh, okay, have a seat, have a seat. Thank you, thank you. Okay, my last question. Stand up if you have this. This is a part 107 license. Oh. Hey, all right. Round of applause for this brother over here. Mahalo. Brother Kainoa, that's the president of Kolea Gold. He too is a part 107 licensed carrier. Oh, I just want to put things into perspective. <laughs> So, Colea Gold. Colea Gold is a limited liability company that is focusing on bringing opportunities to the drone industry for people living here in Hawaii. What kind of opportunities? Well, we notice everybody, or not all, have their Part 107 license. And Kainoa took it upon himself in our basement <laughs> in Makakilo to write a curriculum. He wrote this curriculum for over three years in the making. After three years, I translated it in Olelo, Hawaii. Just January, we were able to get a contract with Kikulukai Pune Anunui, the school I grew up in, and we are teaching it. Teaching how to obtain this Part 107 license, Mako Olelo, Hawaii. Yes, we translated it in English too, so we can do it at your school. <laughs> um, in the process, drones is so new and so awesome that before this part 107, you have to actually get your pilot license, your actual, you, you need to get into a plane and fly. <laughs> oh. So what did I do? Oh, yeah, I went to go get my pilot license. <laughs> <laughs> I can fly a Cessna 172 over here in Kalailo Airport. If you guys are ready, I can go to a neighbor island and teach this curriculum. More than happy to. Awesome. The reason why I, I share all of this with you students is because I, I want you to know, as for this word, entrepreneur, the number one rule for business. Number one rule, and my brother, Kainoa's older brother, told us this when we started our business. Protect your intellectual property. What is intellectual property? Your dream. Yeah. And I know you have it. And I believe in you. I got your back. That's what I tell all my students. I got your back. No matter what, this too shall pass. And... It's going to take a lot of courage. So again, my name is Micah with Kaleo Gold. And um, I look forward to meeting you all. Mahalo. Cool, right on. So, so Micah, that was a great exercise to have everybody stand up who knows what a drone is and everyone stand up who owns one. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. So let's tag on that. So did, do you have to get a pilot's license in order to get a drone pilot's license? Uh, not anymore. Yeah, before you have to you have to get your pilot license. But um, I definitely encourage you folks to actually yeah learn how to fly a plane. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but driving from Windward to West Side, whoo, <laughs> all my life, um, might as well get on one plane and fly <laughs> to the next airport. <laughs> 
need to make a right size drone just for one person kind of carry. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds good. Awesome. Uh, so in that case, uh, you know, what, what led uh, you or anyone in your company to be interested in drones in the first place? Uh, I got to say, was um, I'm a father, so I have a, a, a five-year-old daughter, and just like any father, you need one hobby. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> 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 I got to tell you, oh, my daughter, she's five, but she thinks she's 15 already. So she pushed the limit, and she's a natural-born leader, and I got to keep up to her, so... Um, I saw these drones, I love media, and I love aviation, obviously, and so uh, I, I saw uh, a guy, a pilot flying over at, in Miley, uh, filming a canoe race, and I, I thought that was so interesting for something of the future and something that means a lot to me in the past for Nahoi uh, Va'a or canoe paddling, and I said, oh, that's interesting. That's an interesting gap, yeah? And growing up, you know, with my background, a gap, you can break it down, yeah? G-A-P. Um, G stands for goal. You give yourself a goal. A is attitude. You got to have good attitude to close this gap. <laughs> and, of course, P is perseverance. So, uh when I saw drones, I thought, oh, that's an interesting gap to close. And I believe I can do it. And when I went to Kainoa Jimenez, uh, being his background in engineering and uh, mechanics, oh, he's, he's our jack of all trades. That's why he's the president. He's oh, amazing. He's amazing leaders. And um, we, we believed in it. And, and till, till today, we're, we're, we're pretty. I mean, we're uh, the trailblazer of this <laughs> industry, we're breaking ground. Awesome. So, Mike, I guess a couple more quick questions. One is, what's a good starter drone? Yeah, say someone who's interested in drones out here uh, doesn't have like deep pockets, but wants to learn a bit about how to use one. What should they go get? Um, the best thing to do is talk to your principal at the high school and tell them about Kolea Gold, and then. <laughs> 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 you know, uh, no, it's it's important before you even buy the drone. It's interesting. You can buy the drone before you even get your license, but you gotta know the rules. You gotta know all the regulations. This is this is you're dealing with the Federal Aviation Administration, so you're not going to Halava. You're going to the airport if you get caught, and you're not. <laughs> um, kind of big difference, but we're not doing that to scare anyone. We 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 knew how important it is, and. Oh, you know, over here in Hawaii, the true definition of aloha is to make sure we take care of our next generation. Because I know you guys going to take care of us. So, um, with that said, yeah, uh, getting a drone, you know, in our breakout session, come, come and see what we have. And, and we can explain a little bit more about, you know. We, we don't like go after your money. It's not about the money. It, yeah, but thank you. No, thank you, Micah. That's awesome. And I guess uh, I, and that, that ties in nicely with what Nolan said. It's important to understand thoroughly, right, with the technology you're mm -hmm. using, how you're attempting to use it before you bother to, to dive in too deeply. So thank you for sharing that. That's great. I guess the last question I have for you, and then I want to open up for a few minutes if there's any questions from the audience is, yeah. could you, and you can think about it if you want, maybe answer at the end, what's maybe one of the more surprising ways drones are being used right now that maybe we in this room might not be aware of? Oh, if you don't mind, I'd like to answer that right yeah, now. Do it. Go for it. All right. Okay, so um, this is a huge eye opener. Uh, we have total nine students in our class, and we went down to the capital to a drone day. Yeah, our state uh, leaders and our legislature got to create this drone day. We brought the students and Captain Rob Emai from uh, Honolulu Fire Department at Kalai Lo, Engine 43. He invited our students, all of us, to um, the first phase of the drone program for Honolulu Fire Department. We're going to use drones to save lives. We, they're using it for 
uh, dropping off life preserves. We have a lot of drownings in Hawaii. Why not a drone drop off a, a life vest or even an AED to a, to a scene? Uh, another one was for, we have a lot of fires. They're using fire uh, drones to map out where, like strategic planning to where they're gonna put out the fire so it doesn't spread all the way across Nanakuli, Wainai, Makaha, and where I'm from. So, um, it was a, to me, that I, I, was, I was surprised. I was surprised that we're doing something rather than nothing. And that's important to me. That's important for us. And as a, as a Kanaka Maoli, as a, as a community member in this, on this uh, beautiful state of Hawaii, I, I think we can. We, we can do something. We can do something with these drones more than what we're doing right now, take picture, show video. It's a tool in, in creative media and it's important. Um, but yeah, there's other things that drones can get into, especially in uh, saving lives. So Malo. Thanks, Micah. That's a great answer. Thank you very much. Yeah. Great, right, guys. We, we have a few minutes left. Does anyone have a burning question or desire, something you want to share with one of our guests or something you'd like to know? Uh, if you do, just throw your hand in the air, and I'll try to get through as many people as I can. Don't all do it at once. We can't, we can't take everybody. <laughs> Go ahead. Any questions from the students over here? Yes, Miss, what would you like to know? Um, I have a question for Ms. Aguilar. Yeah. Um, I don't think it's going to replace it. There's definitely a lot of advantages that a, that DaVinci has over Adobe right now. But um, in my field of work, we use them hand in hand um, because there are still aspects of Premiere that are very useful that DaVinci isn't really good for just yet. Well, just maybe just in my experience because I'm still learning because there's still a huge learning curve for me. But um, I would say to do both. Learn, learn your software, learn both, um, both programs. Don't just like hone in on one because wherever field of work that you're gonna end up in in the future, um, it's gonna come in handy. So having the knowledge of using Adobe and DaVinci is gonna serve you very well, like in the long run, yeah. Great, thank you, yeah. Any other questions, guys? Yes, young man. Uh, I think that's a great question. So um, what inspires me to take on all kinds of different things and, and learn about them? Uh, it, it goes to my personality. Uh, I, if you were to look into my brain, like it's firing, it looks like fireworks. There's all kinds of different things. So, and, and it, my wife always jokes, around. there are some people that their personality is like, they like to get, she's opposite of me. She finds something that she wants to learn and, and do and she just laser focus and that's what she wants to do, whereas for me, when I think of something, it always branches off into, well, if I do that, then I could also do this, or what if that relates to this and all? So it, it comes to my personality, I think, is where I'm always just, I have a creative personality, I think. I always am thinking about um, what other things can I create, um, and how else can I communicate to either um, the audience that I'm trying to reach, or communicate myself to myself, you know? Um, I think that whenever uh, people came up to me and were like, what do you want to do? I always never had a good answer. I said, I, I know what the result I want, which is to be of value to people, but how do I do that? I don't know, and I'm still figuring it out. But as I continue to look at that as what the result is, then I start to see all these different opportunities. And, and, uh, and if I start to try it out and I like it and I feel like I can do it and, and – and help others, like then I continue to learn more about it. So it started with, for acting was where it started for me. I thought, you know, that looks like fun. Um, let me go try that out. And then from that came uh, opportunities to direct. And I was like, now that looks like fun. Let me do that. And, and then I got into, well, how do I use that to make money? And then I went into the advertising world. And so it, everything kind of linked together. But um, to answer your 
question in short. I think it's just my natural nature of always having different creative ideas and then figure out, like, well, how do I achieve that? What kind of medium can I use to, to do that? So that's how it is. And not every, like, I would say maybe half the ideas that I came up with uh, actually turned out to be good ideas. So just know to, to be forgiving of yourself and saying that, you know, not everything's going to be perfect. But to give yourself at least that opportunity of saying, well, let me at least put enough into it where I know that I, I've given it a good shot and, and that I um, learned enough about it so that I know for sure this is what I want to continue or what I don't think will fit me uh, in my life. So, yeah. Ooh. Yeah, thank you, Noah. Great. Awesome. Yeah. Any, uh, any other questions? Go ahead. Throw, throw your hands high in the air. Yes, sir. Augmented reality instead of virtual reality? Yeah. Yeah, that's an interesting question. Uh, does anyone have any thoughts? Like, what? Or maybe we maybe we turn that question to what are some potential rabbit holes, right? That we want to avoid. Like, you. you how, do you avoid the rabbit holes? how do you avoid the rabbit holes? What are some technological rabbit holes that you see looming, and how do you avoid ones you might not even know are there, right? <laughs> Is there like a right period of time to wait to jump on something? You know what I mean? Like, what's what, what's some good advice about that? Yeah, you know I mean, like. Uh, I, I agree, VR seemed like such a huge thing a few years ago, and maybe it will be, but it certainly hasn't become anything, <laughs> not much yet. I can talk from our experience in print. Um, so right now, I mean, how many of you guys read, like, print magazines anymore, the newspaper? I mean, some of you do. Oh, good, thanks. You're keeping my job stable. Great. Um, but we're noticing there a drop-off right in subscri subscriptions and in um, people buying our magazines from newsstands. So one of the... I guess rabbit holes, I guess is the best way to put it, would be digital magazines. So I think Nella is also in the same category as us. We've, you know, I think most publications have launched what is a digital format for our publications. And I mean, how many people really will get, we thought, like this is 10 years ago, that everyone was gonna get iPads. And with an iPad, you would flip through basically the exact magazine you would get in print. And we thought, oh, that's the future. Everyone's going to get tablets, and no, no one did. Tablets aren't doing what I think people thought they were going to do, um, and people are not consuming print products the way we thought they were going to do digitally. And that was a rabbit hole that a lot of print publications went down. It didn't work. Um, a lot of companies, New York Times, for example, spent a lot of money trying to enhance the digital product, and it did not work. And we are still thinking about that being the future. And so we are talking about that right now in our company is whether or not we invest in, in this digital format. Are people ever going to ditch the print or ditch our website for a, pr a digital product? Um, I don't know. And so I think we're right there where we're deciding whether or not to go down this rabbit hole, hoping like we hope it's successful and make money, um, but I, I don't know. And that, that's the one thing. I think our philosophy is to test it very slowly and, and sort of um, in stages and see what the reaction is. But a lot of it is we don't know what technology is going to do tomorrow. And that's scary for people who have not relied on digital all this time. So I think what we're doing, I, our strategy again, is to just try it and see what happens. And if it fails, oh well. Not put all your eggs in one basket, I guess that's the cliche. Just kind of try a lot of different things and see what takes. And that's been a strategy that we've been doing. I'm not saying it's been smart or successful, but that's just the, what we've been doing for now. Yeah. And may maybe to sum up some excellent things that you guys all said actually is, is know your audience, right? Know what you're trying to do. And technology is just a tool, it's not necessarily a, a fix, right? Yeah, so it, it, just because a technology is new or seems exciting, it may not solve your problems, right? Or it may not do for your business or your personal life what you hope it will. It, it's, 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 you know, as Kat pointed out, a step-by-step -step process. Uh, and, and slowly doing research, as, as Nolan pointed out, and Micah, right? Do your due diligence, know how these technologies function, how they, how they can reach people, and, and how they can't, right? Like, even talking about print media, like, I'm, I'm one of those people that will never read anything on a tablet, right? I prefer to have it in my hands, right? 
And so uh, in the industry that, that I was in before I became a professor, I was in game design, tabletop game design, pen and paper role playing games like Dungeons and Dragons oh. and uh, nice. Pathfinder, games like that. Yeah, so that, that was my world before I, I transitioned to education full time. And uh, there, there were two magazines that were put out by Wizards of the Coast called Dungeon and Dragon Magazine. They were two separate magazines. And they canceled the magazines because they thought we we're just going to do it all online and it destroyed. The, they don't exist anymore, yeah? And, it, and, and with magazines, at least it used to be, you could tell me if it's still this way, Kat, but you, had, you very carefully build your empire of where they were put, right? You very carefully get space in bookstores and magazine shops and wherever they sell magazines. And once you cancel a magazine after a certain period of time, you can't get those places back, right? So like that, that was one example of going down the rabbit hole, similar one, the one that you're trying to be careful about avoiding, right, Kat? Because they said, oh, we'll just make it all digital. And they canceled the magazines, and it was the biggest mistake they ever made. It destroyed that audience, and they, they lost their whole company almost sank over it, yeah? So it's really interesting to, to try to not jump in whole hog. Actually look at how the technology functions and whether it's going to be useful or not, whether people are going to use it or not, right? So. Yeah, great question. Thank you. That was fun. Uh, we got time for maybe one more. Anyone else have a question for us? Maybe two more. Let me check the time. Ah, one or two more. Anyone? Don't be shy. I saw a hand almost go up. Yes, madam in the back there. I'm going to put this out there. Yeah. It's a little more broad, but yeah. um, my name is Amy Gundis, and I own a company in Hawaii called Olamana, yeah. and we do custom apparel. And we just started a program where we work with Catholic High School, and we have the students redo the logo, the identity, the messaging for the school. They designed their own shirts, they designed their own hats, their own set. Everything was their messaging, their story, and opportunity for them. And the reason I'm going to talk to you, I want to give you just a little highlight of what we've done, what the, the, the goal is. Sure. But I think with students, and I know a lot of times it's hard to speak in front of people, it's uncomfortable when you don't know people. So I'm going to show you guys how to ask for help from the community when you're working on something on a community level. And that's what I want to put out there. Because the program that we're creating is so that the kids can not only have products that they're going to go sell, but all the money from that is going to go back into them funding so that they can buy 30 iMac computers and start their own design program cool. at Castle High School and run it themselves. Yeah, awesome. And it's feeding into the academy system. And it's all student driven. The messaging of it, we have it on Hawaii News Now on Friday. It's going to be coming out. They did a documentary on it and they're following it. And what I'm asking is see, we're working with other community leaders to come in and help create these programs. And everything is curriculum. It's kind of tossed out the window. It's more collaboration instead of competition, and then the kids identifying what do we want to do, what do we want to work on, and having these community solutions, it's not just for a, a grade of regurgitating information, but really working through this process with the kids so they learn business from start to finish, whatever industry they're working in. So as far as messaging and getting it out there, what ways do you kind of encourage kids to do what we're all doing on a bigger scale as adults? Because it's not easy, no matter how old you are, it's uncomfortable to do it, but it's like how do you get help if you're not willing to put it out there and say, hey, here's what we're all working on. What can we all do together to really make these programs grow? Because this is a statewide initiative. This isn't just for this little microcosm. It's small, so we can roll it out. And we have Kapiolani Community College is talking to us. Yeah. So the Culinary Institute can do the same thing. Cool. So kind of looking how we can all collaborate more and just putting it out there instead of trying to talk to each person individually. Sure. I just want to ask you guys how you would kind of approach yeah. messaging. Is there a platform that young people should be on, for example, or, you know, is there, what, what's, what's, like, maybe if you, let's keep it short because we have to get to the breakout sessions, but does every one of you maybe have, like, a sentence or two? What's the best advice you can give to young students uh, who are interested in jumping into this field or communicating with other makers? Um, mm -hmm. Anyone who's, who's got it, who's got a sentence or two ready, go ahead and jump in. I would just say that uh, going back to going, to where your audience is and communicating in a way that they respond to and connect to. So that's the key is uh, a lot of mistakes that I think people would work with is they say, this is what I want to tell them. This is what I want to say to them. But if your audience doesn't, they, they don't understand the why they should care, they're not going to hear anything you say. So we always, when we talk to our clients or, or the people we work with, the first thing we ask is like, who are the people you're trying to reach? What do they like? What do they do? Uh, how what do they respond to? And then from there, we figure out, okay, now what are you trying to say? Because what you're trying to tell them may mean nothing to them. Like I spend many times in school where I'm sitting there and we have a speaker and I, I don't know what they're talking about because I, I don't have a reason to care. Um, but if they speak to me in a way or talk to me about things that is relatable to me, now I'll pay attention. So that's my 
two cents on that. Start with your audience. Yeah. yeah. Start with that. That's what I, so even if we relate it to my podcast is if I were to say, hey, this is what I want to talk about to my guests. If I said, Kat, this is what I want to talk about. This is what I want to tell. It, I might not get the authentic, you know, thing from her because it's no longer about her. It's about what I want. What, but the whole thing is I'm, I'm saying this is an episode about Kat. So if instead it's, hey, Kat, let me find out from you and, and follow up questions that obviously are things that she's passionate about or wants to share, um, then it becomes a successful episode. So same thing with these kind of campaigns, whether it's a reach out like that or if it's an advertisement. Like the focus first has to be who you are trying to reach and get to understand why should they care. Why should they listen? Why do they even matter? Or why does it matter to them? Yeah, that's great, thank you. I have just a quick one. Um, this is for everybody, but I, I did tell this to a bunch of high school students recently. Um, if, if you don't ask, it's a no. Um, and I, my mom says this to me all the time, if you don't ask, it's a no. Um, but it's true, if you don't ask, then you said no to yourself, you did. You have to ask the question or ask for help or whatever and let the other person say yes or no. But if you don't ask, you have given up your opportunity for a yes to happen. Does that make sense? And you have to think about the worst case scenario. What is the worst case scenario? Just deal with it. Think about it. Get, it, get your head around it and decide, oh, I guess if the worst case scenario is not that bad, then take the risk. You gotta, I mean, I was young once. I mean, there's a lot of fear right, and asking a question or asking for help or reaching out or whatever it is, a lot of fear in that. I would just say, think about what is the worst outcome that could possibly happen, um, and is it really that bad? So if you don't ask, it's a no, okay? So always ask. I, to add to that, I always say, on top of that, I say, well, think of what the best possible thing could happen, and is that worth, you know, risking it off for? And if it is, then for sure. See, I'm Portuguese, so we always think of the worst, and Catholic. So we always think of the worst. <laughs> well, I, I grew up Chinese, so it's always the worst. But even the best is the worst. You know, so. <laughs> oh, that's great. Or like, um, you know, as Wayne Gretzky, one of the all-time great hockey players, says, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take, yeah. right? If you don't take the shot, you automatically miss. That's yep. great, Kat. Great thing to share. Yeah, Shanika, do you want to share something? Or you um, I just have a quick, uh, just building upon what you just said. Um, because I know like at this like age, we're still trying to figure out like what we're interested in, what we want to get into, and like where we see ourselves, where we want to be in like a couple years or five years from now. Um, get involved. Like social media is, it's not just a platform to like do whatever you want and like consume whatever you want. It's like a platform for you to be able to engage with the things that you care about. So like there, there are so many communities and there are so many influencers on social media that are trying to make a difference and like are trying to connect with you. Get on there and find them and like engage with them. Like they will hold pop-ups. Like here in Hawaii, like we hold pop-ups, we hold markets and we showcase all these entrepreneurs, all these homegrown businesses, all these influencers and people like what this conference is doing right now. So like get on social media and connect with people, engage with them, even if you're just like commenting on like a photo and saying, oh, congratulations on like your business or whatever, or you're just reacting to their story. It's, it's a step, it's like a step in the door um, into creating more meaningful connections with the community and the things that matter. So yeah, get involved, um, follow people, follow communities that you care about and engage with them and yeah, that's all I have to say. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Go ahead, Mikey. Yeah, please. Yeah, no, no, oh. jump in. Yeah, jump in. That's great. Thank oh. you. Yeah. yeah, mahalo. Thank you. Um, with with my experience in preventing rabbit holes and uh, getting involved with the community, uh, I got to say education. Education is, is still key, and it's it's hard to understand. But I, I just recently enrolled at... Uh, UH West Oahu in the Bachelors of Humanities for Creative Media. And the reason why is because I just took Business 300, Art, Intro to Art, Art 101, and Philosophy 101, hashtag philosophy, know thyself. <laughs> it's important. You gotta know who you are. You gotta have that purpose. And you gotta, you gotta ask. And, and of course, you gotta you gotta find those leaders that you wanna even exceed and go farther than that. And that's 
to me, uh, educate yourself. Get out there. Do that research. Find out what you are, your strengths, you know, and, and your weaknesses. And, of course, you know, your opportunities out there uh, and, and, the, and the threats that can make you better. And when you, you know, uh, Jim Rohn, right, he said, uh, if you help enough people get what they want, you can get everything you want. Yeah, and for for us, you know, in our industry, we're so small, but yet we're making such a big impact in our community. We collaborate, you know, we 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 put our pride aside and we we collaborate. I, you know, in fact, Mike Elliott from Drone Services Hawaii, he's here. He's in our breakout session, and we can talk a little bit more there about what we're doing. But uh, please come, and f for the most part, and our OPO students keep going. Like I said. I got your back, no matter what. I'm a student too, and no excuses for me. I mean, I'm, I'm in the UH system too as well, and it's important, it, it is important, and so keep going, Malo.